lawsuits, other things that would slow down you know, potential adoption go away because if noise is the only issue, you know, that's something that Joby is all for amongst. Talking Joby here today with Travis out of California. We have quite a few people on social media talking about EV tool as some kind of fantasy that's not, never gonna happen. And interestingly, I came across this from Morgan Stanley, that there's already been a service in place in New York, the new Boeing Virtual Turbocopter service uh, in the 50s and 60s, operating for more than 20 years. And Stein, you've done some calculation on the fuel consumption of this <laughs> interesting helicopter. Yes, we did. We calculated at the end that uh, this aircraft probably used somewhere in the range of 680 uh, kilograms of fuel an hour which of course is a really large number if you compare that to any other mode of transport and of course if you look at that vehicle that's not going to be convenient to fly at all so it was a really interesting surface but i think it's not of this time perhaps uh, joby will do better what's your take travis yes no i think it's great to just see that things that we might look at now as seeming futuristic or possible some variant of them have been tried previously maybe the technology wasn't right the execution wasn't correct, etc. So all those things that you mentioned, I think the cost of fuel just alone probably meant that that business wasn't too long for the future. And I mean, at that time, fuel was a lot cheaper, obviously, too. But big thing, just from my experience of, you know, there's a service now that is you know, flying passengers from the Hamptons and from some of the local airports in New York. Um, and so that is kind of the, the next version of it. Once we unlock with Joby, with the certification, etc. partnership with Delta, you're going to see that exact picture almost where it says connecting New York with jet age travel. And instead of that, you know, Chinook looking helicopter, Helicopter. It's going to be a Joby aircraft. You know, one big thing was a challenge for them. There was an accident. Uh, it's a famous one at the Pan Am building. And I think something that is also going to be key is finding um, places to land that aren't on the top of a 50 meter building because there's a lot of other dynamics that happened. And that's exciting because Joby has partnered with the city of New York and the Port Authority, the financial district teleport, which is just their ground level. So again, just a quicker means to make something in the past was more rudimentary. You know, we're bringing it to the future. Yeah, and talking about the Hamptons, I find that uh, also a great case for the Joby service because there has been quite an extensive court case for East Hampton Airport with local residents trying to stop the amount of helicopters going in and out that location due to noise. So I think Travis, that's also plays quite well into the business case of Joby. Correct, yeah, that circumstance there for that particular airport I am familiar with. And you know, it, it really did come about because of just noise. It wasn't about the amount of air traffic, et cetera. It was, it was strictly about noise. Also, the airport was originally intended for more smaller aircraft and not some of the uh, more high-end and mid-sized jets and other sized jets that are going to be trying to get into the airport now. But I think you know, it leans into to Joby's case. Jobin has talked about that. You know, the, the CEO of Joby has talked about that from the beginning. That is something specific to Joby's vehicle that you know, some of the others, archers, et cetera, don't have is blade um, design for their propellers is specifically for low signature of noise. So you, you know, start to see lawsuits, other things that would slow down you know, potential adoption go away because if noise is the only issue, you know, that's something that Joby is all for amongst the many other things, making it more safe. And yeah, that is so important, guys. I mean, we talk about price point, people say, yeah, but a taxi ride, an Uber ride is X. We have another clip where we talk about the horse market and the transition to the automobile and that how the total addressable market expanded. And this is a really, really good case where it's not about being cheaper. It's not about being more economically friendly. It's about having access to a service that otherwise wouldn't be available because you're not gonna get a permit if you have a vertiport or you want to create a vertiport somewhere and you don't meet standards on safety and emissions and noise. And that's the interesting thing. And that's also the great uncertainty in this equation. Why any prediction we're going to share here with you on future total addressable market bound to be wrong, but that's the nature of the game, I guess. Yes. And I don't believe it matters if it's wrong, as long as direction is correct. I mean, this ties into a conversation we've had quite a while ago at Travis regarding valuation. You hinted at it before this recording. I'll uh, link it down below in the description for the viewers at home. But the thing is with companies like these, they're so disruptive that if you make this bet correctly and if they produce a compelling product at a large enough scale that the cost go down low enough for it to be economical then you can't predict what's going to happen then it might just be the next tesla we don't know for now and that's the exciting part about potentially investing in joby of course that you have that really compelling upside while the maximum downside is still a 1x you know 100 one thing that i think is really exciting they are doing all of the things that are both flashy and exciting headlines such as the vehicle testing in new york but what is also most compelling 
compelling for me in terms of that bet into the future just directionally. They're taking care of the regulations, right? They're taking care of working with you know different municipalities, different you know, levels of the government and different countries. They're doing this at the right scale, not spreading themselves too thin, but also entrenching themselves in all the different aspects of the business. So that's where I really think that there's some exciting times ahead. In particular this year, Joe B has said that 2025, they would start some version of commercial service. So uh, the clock is ticking. The clock is ticking. And on that note, talk to you soon.